Hallelujah. We worship you, O oh God, for God is wealthy to be praised. I welcome you for tonight's Bible study. I am so glad that you remember to log in. You made the time. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. So welcome, my friends. Welcome, my sisters and brothers, uh, into this hour of fellowship as we together search the scriptures for knowledge, for wisdom, and for spiritual growth in our faith. Amen? So let us pray to the Lord. Oh God Almighty, thank you. Thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment of coming together virtually uh, through the phone and the internet means uh, to gather and learn in order to grow and mature in our faith. We thank you, Lord, that uh, you are with us all the time as you have promised. You said you will be with us always. Wherever we go, whatever we do, we would be blessed by your presence. So, Lord, we invite you indeed. Come into our hearts, come into our minds, Come into our homes and into our places of work. Come, follow us, Lord, into the hospitals and nursing homes, wherever we are. We need to feel your presence, for this is the time that we have set aside to honor you and to worship and fellowship you. And Lord, we have come in these different uh, technical means. We have gathered in different places, even places of pain and sorrow, we have gathered uh, at this hour. For this is a sacred time when we gather in the name of Jesus just to say a praise to you and also to learn together a word that comes from you. So bless us, open our hearts and open our minds and prepare, O oh Father, a place in ourselves, in our inner selves, so we can accommodate you and your word as we seek your word as a liberator. Our word, Lord, is a redeemer. Your word, Lord, is light to our feet. Your, your word, O oh God, is our refuge in our time of need. So we need your word at this time and we need your enlightenment so that when your word is spoken and explained with the help of your Holy Spirit, your children, your beloved daughters and sons who are listening, they will be blessed, they will be comforted, and they will be strengthened to continue on the journey of life. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Let somebody say, Amen. 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 And so before we jump into the scriptures, um, uh, we, we're going to listen to uh, another song. Uh, you raise me up. Let us sing back in the night.
Amen. Amen. You raised me up. I love, uh, I love that song. It's so powerful. Uh, you raised me up. We are all raised up by God. And there's nothing we can do without God. And for that reason, we continue to be uh, who we are and where we are. Let's jump right into the scriptures tonight. We will be reading from uh, the book of 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel, chapter 7. Uh, if you have your Bibles, please find it. <clears throat> I'll give you uh, a few seconds to find. <laughs> uh, it's, it's sometimes challenging to locate scriptures, I know. And this book of Samuel can be, can be a little tricky if you're not familiar with uh, uh, the Old Testament scriptures. It's on the Old Testament, uh, by the way. So uh, if, you, if you start from Genesis and you keep moving forward, you will get to the Judges, and then you find uh, 1 Samuel, and you proceed to 2 Samuel. And that's where we are, 2 Samuel chapter 7. If you find the book of Kings, you have passed 2 Samuel. <laughs> so we we are going to uh, look at that. Whether you found it on your own Bible or not, I will invite you to uh, just listen to to the reading. And if you found it, you can just follow along. Now, when the king was settled in his house. And the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him. The king said to prophet, to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say, to my servant David. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declared, uh, uh, declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house 
for my name and I will establish the, the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him and he shall be a son to me. That, my friend, is the word of God to you, his beloved people. Now, um, we have quite a scenario here <laughs> to entertain ourselves with this evening. We see on the one hand the characters that are, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, interacting in this story. One is a servant of God, uh, 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 some kind of a, a prophet. This prophet has a name. The name of the prophet is Nathan. And now, the second character we hear about is another servant of God uh, who was selected by God to be a king. The name of this second character is David, King David, if you will. But there is another character that is actually the most important of them all. <laughs> that character uh, uh, is above every other character. Uh, that character is the creator, as a matter of fact, of this entire universe, of every piece of it, whether on the surface of earth, or on the sky, or elsewhere, on the moon. God has created it, has put it together. And so that is the third character. So we have three main characters. And there is a reference of another, uh, so some other characters that are not directly in play here. They are just being referred to, uh, such as the people of Israel, uh, or, um, you know, the, the, the offspring of David, the descendants of David, uh, to whom God is making promises that he will raise them as kings and that he will always ensure that out of the children of David and the offspring, the descendants of the blood lineage of David, they will always be one to be a king. And God assures uh, uh, David that uh, he will fulfill that promise. Now, what is the issue on display here? What is the matter? What is bothering David? <laughs> it begins with David, that's correct. Uh, David apparently is now, you know, uh, on his home taking a break. Um, uh, you know that the, the, this King David was, was really an action king. <laughs> Let me take my water break here. So King David was really an action king, was an action king. He was always busy. He was, uh, uh, he had his hands full, he had his hands full. At a time when he was raised uh, to be a king, you remember from the previous class, Bible study, that we had, I made reference um, of David being uh, chosen by God and anointed in some kind of a confidential arrangement, <laughs> and so, uh, and then the, the, and then and then you know he he got involved with uh, uh, with the wars that were there uh, that involved his people, his tribes, and uh, uh, the the Israelites under the rulership of King Saul, uh, his predecessor. Uh, the one that at some point did not please God and God decided to knock him out, uh, to take him out of the picture and to bring in this little boy, uh, David. And so uh, after David was anointed in a confidential setting, um, uh, David, the son of Jesse, uh, Jesse, his father, who actually had despised David, had had himself rejected or undermined David. Uh, he could not see any, any uh, value, any maturity, any uh, suitable qualifications on his last born, his eighth son, uh, David. Uh, rather, when the prophet was sent to him 
and announced to him that God had sent that prophet to to anoint uh, one of his uh, children as king uh, that father Jesse rather uh, resorted to his cultural uh, tribal customary traditional uh, uh, you know uh, things that made sense to himself to his family and to his people and he did not realize that God does not necessarily fit into our own criteria, our human tribal criteria, are, 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 you know, uh, and, and we have seen that when uh, Barack Obama was elected president, no one within the American setting uh, would have expected it. <laughs> You know, we certainly did hope. <laughs> we did hope that something like that would have happened. Um, and, and great characters amongst uh, the, the leaders of the civil rights movement, such as the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., they had uh, been given the prophecy by God. And they, uh, uh, you know, uh, Dr. King prophesied about something like that happened. Uh, uh, post uh, Dr. King's own life. Uh, as a matter of fact, Dr. King said that uh, 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 it was part of his dream that one day, uh, uh, you know, his little daughters and sons, <laughs> they would walk hand in hand, uh, uh, you know, their, his children being black, uh, walking hand in hand, grabbing their hands with white kids, from whom the, the, the black community at the time were separated and, 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 and discriminated from, marginalized. And so when, when President Barack Hussein Obama uh, or, or, you know, uh, was risen into presidents in the United States of America, in North America, that was like a miracle. <laughs> you know, it was like an angel had fallen from the skies something have, is lost from the place or something <laughs> uh, you know even even people within the colored community uh, they were in disbelief um, uh, because uh, you know uh, it, it, it is uh, it was uh, seemingly impossible and now uh, uh, on top of that legacy we have uh, our own uh, uh, Kamala Harris, <laughs> the Vice President of the United States of America, you know, in, in the Northern American region. And so uh, uh, the things that truly seem impossible to our sight as humans, uh, the things that other people tell you you'll never achieve, uh, you'll never be successful on, uh, you, you got to know that you are a child of God. And if God have set up some greatness to you and that God is busy setting you up uh, 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 towards the fulfillment of such greatness that God have set up for you <laughs> so do not give your ear to people uh, to your co-workers your uh, colleagues in school your neighbors and even within your own family or even within your own parents who might have uh, undermined your potential as if because they're your parents, they absolutely control your destiny and your identity. They don't. Uh, because uh, who you are in essence, uh, it is God's business. <laughs> and God decided alone to bring you here. And so God has uh, something uh, uh, for you. It's, and God does not just wait and watch you and hope that you will somehow by any chance by any like, land to your opportunity. No, God is actively setting you up for success, setting you up to rise, to prosper, and to, to reach places you've never imagined. That's what God does behind the scenes. All you gotta do is to do your part. If you are in school, work so hard in school. Study, you know, check those books up review your material start really hard don't take it easy work work hard take it easy but work hard enough to get a a, a, a decent grade that represents your name well in that school okay uh, you will encounter some teachers or some professors who 
uh, may be in a bad day and they uh, don't, don't mind them don't mind them uh, you know when you when you get a negative grade a low grade uh, uh, which seems to be an injustice compared to the effort you have put up reading and studying and all of that uh, you know don't bring don't blame your teacher or don't uh, uh, demonize your professor or your teacher uh, you, you just say okay all right all right you know and, and you get back to those books don't give up get back to those books start very hard and, and and make sure that the next time you have a test next time you have an exam or an assignment uh, that teacher and that professor will be surprised uh, and, and he will even ask himself or herself is this true when he's putting that A on your exam paper and then he can say yeah my god you know, my god is awesome <laughs> my god is alpha and omega I made it and, and that's how you keep going you just keep going when, by doing your part you are walking yourself into the fullness of your potential that God has set forth for you and you are claiming you are claiming you know uh, the fullness of your blessings into your life by doing your part things don't happen magically oh I go to church oh I'm a great Christian oh I do this so I don't have to worry I don't have to to work hard I don't work to do this or that things will just unfold on me because I am a child of God false prophecy that's completely false you gotta work hard my friend do your part well and, and while you do that uh, remember to pray remember to ask God for help when you fall when you fail one day do not be disencouraged let that failure be your motivation to do better the next time and, and you keep going like that and eventually you'll end up in places you never imagined you know uh, 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 our our president Obama I'm sure he never dreamed of being a president when he was a little kid <laughs> but he just kept working his way his way out and then he eventually landed in a law school uh, he was probably just thinking oh I'm just gonna start to be a lawyer like any other lawyer <laughs> he had no idea what God had set up for him but he was busy doing his part and eventually he he break through he broke the ceiling and if now we have a black president in North America. Are you kidding me? We have a, even a vice a black president in North America. Oh, Lord Jesus. I think God is right here with us right now. <laughs> they can still try to shake us up and, and all, all of this craziness that's taking place, the drama. It doesn't matter. We got to keep working hard, do our part, and, 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 and allow God to do his part. And then we will merge those efforts into uh, landing us into our fullest potential and the place of greatness. That's our destiny. All of us, both black and white and brown and red and green, and whatever, we are all destined to greatness. And so do not you, don't you listen to, to negative uh, sounds, negative waves all around your ears. You got to know that you are made up for great things. Uh, if you are not there yet, it's not a sign that you're never going to be there. It's just, you just, you're just work in progress. You are still on your way. Keep doing your thing and let God do uh, God's thing too. And the, the culmination of that is to land you in a place you have never imagined ever. Just like all the other uh, uh, great people that we, we, we learn about. And so King David... Uh, uh, had been had been set up by God, had been prompted by God, had been destined to land into kingdom, even against uh, uh, the thought of his father uh, and, and and his his siblings. And now, once he was anointed as king in that confidential setting, God used him uh, in a mighty way, you know, uh, to fight famous uh, famous warriors like. Uh, uh, the Goliath, you remember the story of the word Goliath uh, of the Philistine, and then from there he was uh, um, uh, uh, assigned to lead, uh, to be the commanding officer, uh, the commanding uh, 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 ch uh, uh, chief, commanding a soldier amongst the military, and so they were winning battles and battles and battles and battles. Because that was the context, the historical context of that time. You know, the people of Israel were, e were like immigrants but fighting immigrants moving from place to place homeless they have no home from their own 
Because remember, God moved Abraham, their, their, their forefather, their, their patriarch. <laughs> so he moved him from his home. And now from there on, the generations and generations, from the direct children of Abraham, uh, such as Isaac and Esau. So they went on and they reproduced and they multiplied. And, but they were in foreign lands. They were immigrants. And, and sometimes they were welcomed. Other times they were mistreated. But God had them covered. God had them covered behind the scenes. So those are the wars that we're talking about here. Uh, those are wars of conquering different territories and moving from place to place as God directed them. It was a long journey before they even landed on the promised land, the land that God had promised to, to, uh, to Abraham. And even after they had landed in, uh, uh, you know, in that promised land in Canaan, uh, those struggles continued. Uh, uh, truth be told, the Israelites, uh, the Jewish people, they are still uh, in some kind of a battle. You know, they are all over. They are immigrants everywhere. They have been scattered everywhere. Uh, part of it is a fulfillment of the scriptures uh, themselves because, you know, uh, uh, when we say the Bible doesn't lie, it's, it, we mean it. Uh, the, the, these holy scriptures, whatever is printed on it, it will come to pass. And so we see what's happening, uh, uh, all the drama in, in, in Israel and Palestine and all of that. Uh, uh, and, and so uh, David, at this stage, for what we're talking about today, uh, he had apparently coming through this all this uh, sequence of wars and all of that, he had been officially enthroned in the, into power and so forth. And now uh, uh, he is compelled in his heart to build a temple for God um, uh, because you know God had been moved had been in the goal of his people God had been on the goal uh, with God's people wherever they were God was also there but there was also a symbolic uh, a religious representation of the actual presence of God okay so the people uh, wanted to feel some kind of direct uh, connection, a visible sign of the presence of God. But they did not have a temple. That's what we do nowadays. Uh, if you feel like you know you are you are feeling some kind of emptiness in your soul and your spirit, you just walk through a church. Any church will welcome you. You just go into the church. Uh, you go to the sanctuary. It's a place in any church. There's a, a place that is a specific designated spot, spot uh, that is attributed to the holiness of God. God's presence symbolizes God's presence. You just, in, in our, uh, most of our Christian denominations, we call that place a sanctuary. That's where the name sanctuary comes from. The sanctity, something holy, you see. So the presence of God is a sanctuary. It's a holy because God is holy. We believe that God is whole, meaning God is without any sin. Uh, God is without any uh, 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 mistakes or whatsoever. And the morality of God is pure. You know, it's pure uh, by nature. It's not, a, it's not like the, the, the morality of us, the human beings. You see, uh, our hearts and minds are corrupted by, by sin. Uh, and so we don't have purity in us except through Christ and through the blood of Christ and through the work of the Holy Spirit. So we are made holy. It, you know, it, it's a gift. We are, it, it's a gift of grace. We are made holy. We are not holy uh, uh, in our own human nature after the sin that we have committed in the Garden of Eden uh, uh, through the one who represented us at that time was two people, a couple, the first couple, right? Adam and Eve. So they, they messed up with our nature by falling into sin. And so we inherited all of that sin. We are all sinful, uh, regardless of our titles, of our positions in the church, uh, the length of time we have been uh, uh, churchgoers or whatsoever. Sin is a part of us. But Christ, out of uh, Christ's sacrifice, yeah, the bloody sacrificial death of Christ on the cross makes us holy. 
So we are made holy by the grace of God. <laughs> Don't you live there with a, 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 you know, a low face, a low morale, and a feeling down, low-spirited, thinking, oh my gosh, I'm just a sinner. Uh, you know, I'm just going to hell. No, 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 no. Not you, my friend. The blood of Christ has claimed you and me back to the hands of God. And so God has us on, on God's hands. And we are uh, 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 declared holy by our faith that connects us uh, to that soap, in that washing soap, the soap that washes the sin, the blood of Christ. Amen, somebody. Don't you just feel good uh, to know that God has got your back through the blood of Jesus. It doesn't matter what happens to you, uh, whether in life or in death. Like Paul puts it, whether I am alive or dead, it doesn't matter because my life is in the hands of God. Amen. Let the devil try. <laughs> and boy, how the devil tries. Uh, every day, day and night, the devil is at work uh, trying to put you down and trying to convince your mind uh, and your heart uh, that you are a forsaken child, that you are a worthless child. The devil indeed is a liar. Amen? <laughs> the devil is a liar. So whenever you feel like uh, 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 you, you, are, you are nothing more than who you are, know that the devil is a liar putting negative thoughts in your heart in your mind uh, to try to kill you with depression and hopelessness uh, you know uh, try to infect your spirit with uh, endless amounts of health conditions he's trying to have you give up on your faith give up on your god i encourage you tonight to be just like Job who said, no, 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 it doesn't matter. If I die alive, it doesn't matter because God will never forsake me. That God that I worship is with me because it is true. God is with all those who call upon his name. And so David uh, 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 is, is pondering, is pondering amongst himself. And he's thinking, you know, we have this uh, uh, a figure that symbolizes the actual presence of God, which they moved with them wherever they immigrated to. They would carry it, you know. It, it was called an ark, an ark, some kind of a box, you know. Uh, and they had this belief that uh, God dwelled inside that box that they called an ark. Uh, 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 they, 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 you know, they, they, they called uh, that kind of, uh, of act that they transport, they physically carried on their shoulders and transported, and it, it was the holiness of the holiness. Yeah? <laughs> so so uh, uh, wherever they would, they would settle or camp, they would put up a tent and place, uh, uh, place the ark in there, you know, as a symbol of the presence of God. And then they would offer their sacrifices and, and all of that, and, Go there and bow and make all their prayers and, 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 and everything like that. All of their religious activities, they were centered around that tabernacle where they placed the ark of God. And so David is thinking, no, you know what? I mean, I, I have, I'm now a king and I have a decent house, and, but my God is still in tents and, and little tabernacles. And, I, you know, I got to build, I've got to build a decent house, a temple, a church where uh, uh, you know everybody can come and worship God and feel the presence of God there. So it is David's own initiative to do that. So now he is talking with this prophet and uh, 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 Nathan or Nathan. <laughs> I don't know how, how what is the right pronunciation of that name in English language. Nathan. <laughs> so 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 the prophet um, in response to David, he said, well, you know, you are the king. There's more than enough evidence that proves that you indeed have the favor of God. In other words, God is by your side. God is with you. So go ahead and do whatever you please because God is with you. You're going to be successful because the prophet Nathan have seen David and have seen in David 
the evidence of God's presence through David and in David. That's why he's saying that. But both the prophet uh, Nathan and the king David were both wrong. <laughs> why? Because even though it's a good thing what they were, they were uh, you know, uh, thinking and talking about and uh, uh, this idea that grew out of the mind of King David was a good thing, you would think, right? It's a good thing to think about uh, building a decent place uh, uh, for God. So what was wrong with that? What was wrong? Well, the problem though is that that plan was not God's plan. <laughs> <laughs> it was not God's plan. It was all beautiful, but it was not God's plan. And therefore, it wouldn't take off. It wouldn't happen. The King David, maybe he is overtaken by his fame, because he was a famous king and, and a, fa a famous warrior. I mean, just remember that he is the one who has single-handedly <laughs> defeated the giant Goliath right the famous warrior of the philippine and he went on to win wars from battle to battle to battle to battle he would win he had god's favor in his side maybe he was taken by that uh, illusion and fame and said okay so now i'm gonna i'm gonna increase my fame i'm gonna make myself even greater by building a permanent housing for god so that god does not have to be homeless who moves around from tabernacle to tabernacle, a tent to tent. It was not part of God's plan. It was a total, unique, simple, and a complete human ambition and idea. Yet, anything to do with God cannot be purely and entirely a thing of a human conception. God has to be involved, uh, 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 you know, uh, even in putting that kind of idea in you, if it's going to uh, credit God. And all credit out of it, it goes back to God. And so uh, I suppose David, um, uh, you know, would have wanted to claim credit for putting together a temple for the Lord. Yet God had a different plan in mind. And so, after they had that conversation, David sharing his plan, you know, with the man of God, is Nathan, the prophet. Um, uh, uh, soon after that, God then revealed himself to, to the prophet, Nathan, and said, yeah, look, go back and give an answer and directive to David. And that's all that we have read about today on 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1 up to 14a. And, and so the, if you listen to that, God is, is talking uh, to, 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 to the King David through the mouth of God's prophet Nathan. And, and Nathan is communicating to him what he has heard from God. And he's saying to him, you know what, uh, uh, it, it, it's not you, I mean, it's a good idea, all of that, yeah. You still have the favor of God, all right? Don't don't you get me wrong. You still you are still a favored one by God and all of that. The great king, famous king, but the business of putting together a, a housing for God is really not yours. God has not chosen you for that task. Therefore, you are to focus on your own assignment. Did you know that every person? Uh, every leader, every prophet, every uh, uh, you know, every everyone uh, uh, who operates on the name of God has been reasoned by God for a specific period of time, for a specific compile of issues and challenges of that particular time. To address so each one is is brought up for a unique assignment no one is brought up to address every problem that there is none <laughs> amen 
So if you feel called by God, know that God has called you for a specific assignment for you. Not for everybody else you see in the church around. No, 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 no. So stop being upset when you uh, cannot see in other people the gifts that you have. The ways that you have. Because each one is brought up for a specific assignment. So the thing perhaps here is for you and I to figure out what is our assignment <laughs> from God. All right? <laughs> and I'm telling you, if you go with the assignment that God gave you, you will be successful and you will prosper in that assignment. But if you interfere with areas and assignments that are clearly not yours, you're just going to be a distraction. You're going to mess up the beauty of things that God is doing. And you will be in conflict with God. Not with the people that you are messing their work uh, or messing, interfering with as they do their assignment in your midst. You're going to deal with God for the mess that you are doing, sabotaging other people as other people try to fulfill their assigned tasks. So, take time to pray, take time to meditate, and take time to listen to God. Because speaks, God speaks silently, but profoundly in everybody's heart, Amen? <laughs> In everybody's heart, God places thoughts, God places dreams, God places ideas, and God prompts you uh, with the necessary strength and resources that you need uh, to comply and to fulfill the tasks that God has placed in you. Do not mess up with other people's business. Stay on your lane. Know your own assignment. And be supportive of other people's assignment. And stop being a, a, a critical machine. <laughs> oh my gosh, I see that a lot in churches specifically. Lord have mercy. <clears throat> I'll give you an example. And the church that I'm ministering to right now, a wonderful church, it's called St. Mark's United Methodist Church, right here in our great New York City. When the pandemic hit our city and our nation, the globe, uh, uh, like many other leaders did, uh, God placed in my, uh, you know, in my, in my family that vision. Uh, uh, it really came uh, uh, from my wife. <clears throat> so she. She was constantly, you know, dialoguing with me about this, <clears throat> which I also felt in my heart, but I was just intimidated uh, by, 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 by the task and by the, uh, the limitations in the resources. <clears throat> in other words, I was undermining, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the ability that God would place uh, in, in God's people's hands to make that, you know, uh, uh, that task come to fruition and to actually become a, a point of relief to people that were, were, were needed. I was focusing on the fact that, well, you know, my church doesn't, not, does not have money. This is a pandemic time. Nobody is going uh, is gonna to support this because everybody's struggling. As a matter of fact, people are losing jobs. And also, it's a lot of physical labor. No one will come up to do that because they're afraid uh, of, of being contaminated by COVID. Who is going to want to come and interact with a crowd of people trying to help them? rather than people uh, just trying to stay at home, hiding away from the pandemic. That made much more sense, don't you think? <laughs> I was like, I don't want to risk my people, uh, put them on danger, endangering their health by putting them on the risk of getting COVID as they try to help the crowd that is suffering. But God was consistently putting more pressure on my wife not me, it's not my credit, it's my wife. 
Because God, God was consistently pushing her to put pressure in me. So in that situation, my wife was like uh, uh, playing the role of the prophet Nathan. <laughs> and I was like the King David in that situation. <laughs> so she would come to me every chance we got to have a conversation. She would bring that one up. <laughs> it made me so uncomfortable. You know, uh, all my fears up. My fear for the well-being of, of my church people. My fear for the fact that, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, my finance committee does not have the financial resource that would make anything happen of that magnitude. These are thousands of people. But as God continued to press on the button of my wife, you know, and, and so I, I ended up beginning to say, you know what, let's just pray about this. <laughs> so we started praying. So God placed a task for me in a, in, in a context and in a season, in a time such as this of the pandemic when i went to the seminar i had nothing to do with pandemics and, and you know giving people food or what none of that i was trained to preach to pray and to take care of the people but i did not think that that would mean you know having to worry uh, 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 about about feeding people but as i tried to implement that vision from god one of my church members rose up uh, 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 rose up uh, you know uh, in, in negative criticisms ah oh, look at it because I you know I had I had to repair some uh, some rooms in in that huge church building that um, uh, had had been had been become some kind of a, had become some kind of a dumpster you know just throwing everything there and everything was a mess now you can't store food in a mess place it's going to get contaminated by virus infections you're going to make people sick rather than helping people and the church will be sued for that and people will die and get sick get sick and die <laughs> you know and we, we still don't have money so I, I you know god i'm telling you when god have set up a task for you stop excuses stop bringing up excuses oh i don't have this i don't have i can't i uh, i don't have it stop that just say yes to the lord because it is god's business and god himself will bring what you need to make it happen and so god indeed opened doors we were able to repair uh, the places that we needed the places that we needed to repair it's costly it's thousands of dollars that's what this is new york city that we're talking about and so this member was not aware of what was going on because he was not supposed to. And now <laughs> uh, uh, she she's looking at at contractors and buildings are being repaired and money is being spent and she goes on the tax. She goes, oh, this pass is causing us tremendous waste of money of this. This pantry, food pantry, da 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 da. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Stay on your lane and be helpful. Pray for those who are doing something to help and be a helping hand. Do not go against God's plan. She had no idea where did this come from. She thought it was my idea. It's not even my wife's idea, it's God's idea placed on my wife's heart and now all she can see is money being spent she's seeing a pastor who's squandering church money she had no idea where we got that money from it was not from our church at all it was given us for that particular purpose because while god was placing that dream and that task difficult and scary task in a difficult time you know in our world God was also setting up resources to make it happen. Just a couple of weeks ago, we received a $20,000 grant nearly, you know, from a government source towards that particular ministry. So if you are there, you know, wandering and just spreading talks, the distorted talks, 
please <laughs> anything that is a complete and total uh, a human generated thing for the purpose of fame and uh, um, uh, uh, trying to build your own legacy or not, it will fail it will not go anywhere but if God has placed the task for you you better pay attention comply with God and seek to support God's vision because it will not fail with or without Pastor Kisiko, it will not fail because it is not a human being thing, it's God's thing. That's what happened with David. So he came up on his own. Maybe he wanted to, to, to build up his own legacy during the time of his kingdomship. But God said, no, it's not you. That's not my vision. That's not what I have reason you to become a king to do. You, King David, <laughs> will not build me a house. But fear not, because one of your descendants of the blood will happen to be the one who will build it. And now we know the story that uh, later on, after uh, uh, the, you know, the end of the kingdom of David, uh, there was indeed one within his blood lineage called King Solomon. That's the one that God, you know, that's the one that God chose to build a, a huge sanctuary, a big temple for the Lord. The most famous ever. You know, the Bible even offers detailed description of how that temple was put together. See? So what are we learning today? We are learning to pray and listen hard and deeply to the voice of God, to the command of God, to discover our purpose, to discover our assignment from God. And when we discover and execute that assignment, remember one thing, it's not for your fame, it's not for your popularity. Remain humble and obedient to God and give all honor and glory to God. And do not try to uh, let everybody in the entire world know uh, 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 anything about you. Make it clear that God called you to do what you are doing at any scale. Uh, some people think that to be called by God with a special assignment means that you have to be a pastor, a prophet, a bishop. Wrong. None of that. None of that's true. <laughs> well, you may happen to be called for those particular tasks, but that's not the only thing God calls people to do. You as a church member, as a simple Christian, you have a lot of assignments from God. Those assignments will land your life in a different place, will land your family life in a different place. It will help somebody in your community to a better place. It's not you. It is God working through you. Listen deeply. God is speaking to you. God has an assignment for you. Do not jump in in somebody else's assignment and try to mess it up. You do not have a full story. You don't understand what's going on. And you certainly don't know who's behind what you see taking place. You may be interfering with the plan of God. And it will not end well for you. And that's not what we want. Amen? <laughs> And now, the other lesson that we get today is that, you know, um, God is really calling all of us. We are all a chosen people by God on our own way. And sometimes, and, and something that may seem to be very simple and very small. I'll give you another example. Um, uh, um, uh, uh, someone in the church never thought of self of someone great you know uh, was just sitting there by the gate of the church every time people would come the people that uh, 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 this this person would consider important people people of status quo with a name in the society so they would come in and go to worship and go back home and this person was the one standing on the gate 
just welcoming the people mm. with a smile <laughs> on the face, you know, and, 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 and guiding the people uh, to get their seating and all of it. And some of them were rude, mm. with nice suits and wonderful dresses and stylish and the hair is properly done and all of the, and you know, and some of them were very rude and very mean to the person just standing there on the gate. But that was her assignment. That was the assignment God gave that person. I'm telling you, there's no big and small assignment. Just find your assignment. Set your heart, set your soul and ask God, what is it, O oh Lord? that you want me to be helpful with to this your church, to this your kingdom, to this your community. What is it? What is it the smallest thing that I also can do that can be of value, to add value to what you are doing on, in our midst? God will tell you exactly what it is. And when you find your task, stick to it faithfully without seeking praises or recognitions or anything like that. Just stick to your godly assigned task and you will be the happiest Christian ever and God will reward you because you, my friend, yes, you are not that uh, insignificant, that small as you think. You are the greatest asset that God has brought to us as a gift to this humanity, to this universe, to do just what you are doing for the glory of God. Let's know that, treasure that, and honor yourself as you honor God and others along the way. And let us help each other in doing our assigned tasks for God, uh, rather than trying to jump in to other people's tasks, interfere in a negative way, to disencourage, to tear apart, to destroy and kill because by doing that we are cooperating uh, uh, with the devil and, and because the devil is is has got his own task too the task of the devil is to negatively interfere on people who are called to do things for God in a negative way to destroy their morale kill their spirit make sure nothing gets takes off the ground Make sure everything dies before it gets anywhere. That's the job of the devil. And we do have disciples of the devil in the church, in any church. We have disciples of God, but we also have disciples and followers of the devil. Judge by what is going on. But what are people doing? You know, this one's working for God. This one is the devil's agent. Is here for the task of destroying, distracting, and obstructing. Never mind, yours and mine is not the task to judge. We want to find our assigned task and listen to the voice of God and not jump into anything that we are not called to. And let God bless us tonight. Amen, somebody. <laughs> My friends, before I give you the, the closing prayer and blessing tonight, I just want to remind you that this Sunday, it is our All Women's Day here at St. Mark's United Methodist Church. I would like to invite everybody to come. Invite your friends, invite your family, invite your neighbors, anyone you get. Bring them to church. Don't you have the habit of just waking up in the morning and there you go. You are going to church all alone. You are going to heaven alone. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Try to be generous because our God is generous. Invite somebody else. If you are saved, if you have found Christ, make sure somebody else through you finds Christ. It just takes a simple initiative of inviting someone. You'll be surprised uh, how people might respond positively and follow you to your church <laughs> and who knows one day they may end up choosing your church as their own home church amen that is the task of all of us not just the pastor so our minister janelle gale you know our bright uh our bright uh, uh uh minister in the making uh, she will bring a powerful word 
this Sunday and I would love to see the church filled of people everywhere on the pews uh, to support her, to encourage her and, and really to have a good time worshiping and praising our God. Amen. And don't you forget also this Saturday we have our grab and go uh, um, uh, uh, breakfast which is sponsored by our board of trustees you know uh, I believe the donations for the breakfast uh, are as low as $20 it's, it's very 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 low it's a fundraiser of our building so you know even if they said $50 we know that if we can we would support them because they are fighting for the right cause so I hope uh, for your participation in all those events and I'll definitely see you on Sunday. Let us pray In the name of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit I pronounce I proclaim and I declare every blessing from God unto your heart and to your soul and your spirit right now Whatever it is that you are dealing with whatever it is that you are going through in your life and in the life of your family I declare a liberation, a deliverance. I declare that the Lord God Almighty himself will interfere to break uh, the chains of the devil in your life and to give you a breakthrough and to give you a break that you need so that you can breathe, uh, take a deep breath and know that God is in your life and that God uh, is setting you up for something great and magnificent something you have ever, never even uh, dreamed or expected. Uh, and God is busy setting you up and setting things up for you to land in a successful place with your life and through your life. So may you be a blessing to somebody else tonight and every day in your life. Amen. 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 Bye-bye, my friend. I love you and there's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> Buenas noches.